my name is Ben Kanye Kala and welcome to part nine of me discussing step one out of the 12 and 12 and just sharing my experience, strength and hope with all of you regarding uh, the, the understanding for me uh, in my sobriety uh, over the past 31 years and how I've been able to uh, manifest or look at uh, the, the steps in a in a broader way in a uh in a more uh deeper way if you want um looking at it with new pairs of glasses um being more open to learning and exploring more things about who i am and the people that i work with uh here at phoenix rising addiction center and just wanting to continue this series i i, I think it's just so valuable uh at least for me and the people that i'm working with um, to, to gain maybe a different perspective, maybe on something that they've read before out of the 12 and 12 or have, have done the steps before or whatever it might be, but just, just maybe getting a, a, a different look into it in, in, in a different way, uh, uh, through someone else's experience and eyes. And, and it's just great that, that we're able to, to do that and, and to be able to share, uh, our experiences and our strengths and our hope. Uh, in regards to the journey that we've we've been taking, you know, and we've been talking about step one, and uh, we've been we've been reading into how important powerlessness and unmanageability is, and we're going to get into uh, more about it uh, today. We're on page twenty-two, and in 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 the program's pioneering time, none but the most desperate cases uh, could swallow and digest this unpalatable, unpalatable truth about uh, the admission of powerlessness and unmanageability over a addiction, um, whatever problems that might be going on in our lives, in our character defects, or whatever it might be, um, a lot of times uh, people or ourselves uh, don't, get, don't get to that place of admitting powerlessness and unmanageability until it's really, 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 really bad. And it doesn't need to be really, 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 really bad um, in regards to pain and suffering. And, uh, it, 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 and, and it doesn't also have to be uh, things that are happening outside of us in the world. It can be just how we're feeling in our thinking, what's going on in our bodies, and what's happening in our emotions. That, that the pain and suffering of that can be enough for me to, to seek help, to ask for help, to to surrender, to yield to something, yeah? So even these last gaspers often had difficulty in realizing how hopeless they actually were. But if you did, and when these laid hold of the principles with all the fervor with which the drowning sees life preservers, they almost invariably got well. Uh, that is why the first edition of the program published when the membership was small, dealt with low bottom cases only. So many less desperate alcohol are uh, less desperate people struggling with things tried the program but did not succeed because they could not make the admission of hopelessness. And so it doesn't matter how long you've been drinking or using, how long the the the, the situation, how old you are, you know, all that kind of stuff. That that doesn't matter. When when it comes to this admission of hopelessness or this admission of powerlessness, or unmanageability of things that are going on. It, none of those things, labels, roles, age, sex, creed, job, position, none of those things matter when it comes down to this admission of hopelessness, that anybody can do it at any given time, whenever they, they want to, whenever I want to. And... Uh, one of the things that, that, that really stands out for me is when, when, when I'm in that state of hopelessness or just the admission to myself that, you know what, why should I continue handling this? Why do I have to continue handling this by myself? And, 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 the, act of, and the act of reaching out to somebody who might be able to help me and uh, guide me, um, that act of reaching out is huge, you know? And one of the other things too that, that's been really helpful uh, in my journey has been writing. You know, in, in the fourth step, they talk about, you know, admitting to God, to ourselves, and to another human being uh, that's the exact nature of our wrongs. And we can do that type of writing 
at any step, at any time of our lives, for any situation, we can just sit down and just start writing what's going on in our thinking, what we might be feeling in our bodies, what we might be feeling in our emotions, and just write, just start writing things down, and then go back and take a look at it. Admit it to God, to myself, and then once you finish going through it, admit it to another human being. So that there's fresh eyes, those eyes that are helping me look at what I wrote isn't coming from my pain and suffering. So I get a, 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 a better perspective from, from somebody else going, wow, that, that sounds like self-centeredness. Wow, that sounds like a lot of labels. Wow, that sounds like a lot of judgment uh, or, or your character defects or your instincts is, is here. And just looking at the truth, because my truth when I'm in that type of stuff, isn't truth at all. And if I'm pulling from the past or psychological time of the past and the future, none of those things are accurate either. So what I'm doing is I'm reacting to conditioned thinking and the way that I've been and relying on that for where I'm at today or what could be going on or why I'm writing. You know, So that, 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 that admission of hopelessness uh, that has to happen comes from that too comes from writing down what, what I'm thinking and then uh, sharing it with another human being who can help me distinguish what's truth and what's false, you know, in the, in, in the process. So I found that to be very helpful too as, as we move along. So the next paragraph is, it is a tremendous satisfaction to record that in the following years, this change. People who still had their health, their families, their jobs, and even two cars in a garage began to recognize their problem. Uh, as as this trend grew, uh, they were joined by young people who were scarcely more than potential uh, or have potential problems. They were spared that last 10 or 15 years of literal hell the rest of us had gone through. Since step one requires an admission that our lives have become unmanageable, how could people such as these take this step? And that is so true. And that's why I said it doesn't matter how old you are or you know, oh, I haven't been drinking that long or I haven't uh, put myself to this for that long. It's just the recognition that there is some disturbance going on, that, 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 that there's a problem going on, that there is a something that, why am I trying to handle this? Why, why, why am I still in my thinking? Why am I not turning this over to my higher power? And I have a higher power. I might not have a higher power, but why am I not turning it over to the higher power? Why am I trying to manage it and handle it on my own? You know, and, and there's my, my God has given so many and provided so many resources for me to use. Why am I not using them? That's ego. That's simple pride and ego. And that's the thing that keeps me in self-centeredness. That's the thing that keeps me thinking about me, 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 and I, I, I. That's what justifies things. That's what rationalizes things. That's what minimizes things. Uh, that's what makes me point the finger at you rather than me. Uh, so when we get into this, this admission of powerlessness and, 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 and unmanageability, uh, I can no longer do that. I can no longer point the finger at the world or somebody else or something else, or the guy who, who cut me off or, or this and that. I then have to, with this admission, look at me, that I am the problem. And if I don't identify that I'm a problem, and it's not a negative thing of identifying that I'm a problem, but if I don't recognize that there is an issue, then there's no solution. I'm going to continue pointing the finger at you and expecting you to change when the only person that can change is me. And I can't do anything about fixing or, or uh, changing you and, and either what you've done or haven't done. I can only do what I can do for me and in hopes that I provide the space for others to be able to change. And I'm not in that, in that self-centeredness or that ego judging you when I hate to be judged. So, you know, I, I've, I've, I've been very fortunate to have come into the program, the 12 step program when I was 20 years old and uh, it has transformed my life. And this step right here, this step one is the foundation of everything that I've done throughout my sobriety and even in my even in my world and in my life. It's uh it's pivotal. It is the foundation for me. Without this admission every day, throughout the day, I'm in control and not my higher power. 
So I hope this has helped you. I'm going to stop here uh, in our part nine of this of this step. And uh, I've really, really enjoyed uh, sharing and getting the feedback that I've been getting. And uh, I please subscribe to our YouTube channel and continue following this series. Uh, we are going to uh, go into step two and, and go into all the other steps too. And uh, I, I hope that you guys uh, are enjoying this as much as I am. And have a great day. Mahalo.